Nubian Square will be the new home of Benjamin Franklin Cummings Institute of Technology. The two-year technical college will transform a long vacant warehouse in the heart of the black community, bringing education and job opportunities to the communities that the school serves. Richard Taylor, managing partner of Nubian Square since. Thanks for staying with us. And Aisha Francis, president and CEO of the Benjamin Franklin Cummings Institute of Technology is here with us for this segment. Aisha, the new facility is going to include 20 new cutting edge labs, the school's electrical engineering, computer technology and construction management programs, just to name a few. Wow. That's right. Uh -huh. Yes, we're excited about it. Um, tell us more about the vision for the new space and the programs that it's going to offer. Absolutely. We are looking forward to bringing an anchor institution into the heart of Nubian Square, a part of Roxbury that has been underdeveloped uh, for a long time. The block that we're on is, uh, and the address is 1011 Harrison Avenue. It's the former home of the Harrison Supply Site. Mm -hmm. We're building a three-story building, 70,000 square feet, uh, that will really activate uh, an, a block that um, has not had had any activity uh, for a long time. Mm. And, you know, being a home of technical and trade education and bringing that into a neighborhood is really an important part of our work. Now, BFIT has a new partnership with Ginkgo BioWorks to yes. develop an associate degree in biotechnology manufacturing, which is going to offer students a wonderful uh, potential career in the life sciences field, which is considered a very high growth area in Absolutely. the Boston uh, city, right? Talk about that strategic education partnership. Certainly. So this uh, has been in the works for more than a year. Uh, we were connected to Ginkgo BioWorks through the Economic Development Department of the City of Boston and really found synergy in the things that they're interested in, in terms of synthetic biology, but also wanting to seed the whole field, not just their own company, with more diverse uh, students uh, and, and workers who can start in positions and then grow uh, with the, the industry. And, and we definitely are pleased to be part of that. And we are working with the state to certify a program. Uh, and before it gets certified, we're also doing boot camps to really introduce high school students to biotech uh, so that they're ready uh, when the program gets started. Very exciting. And Richard, through BFIT, um, yes. also hoping that a new generation of construction managers right. and developers will be born. Yes, or, and mean, developed. Yeah, the the construction industry has certainly boomed <laughs> over the last five years. Uh, construction costs now are pretty high, so we're trying to all manage that. So there's a career ladder there. But uh, Aisha and I have also partnered on the New Square Life Science Training Center, which will be in our facility, and so we're delighted to be working with her on this. I mean, you have so many students from her that enrolled in her school that live in the area easy commute, we want to provide a place for them also to train. The number one bus from the Newman Square Station can take them to Kendall MIT. Mm -hmm. The Silver Line bus can take them to the seaport. So train in Newman Square for this amazing life science industry and work all over the city. Mm -hmm. And speaking of mass, uh, speaking of life sciences, uh, I'm uh, assuming you're working very closely with Ken Turner and Mass Life Sciences on possibilities? Yes, absolutely. And, and we have had many conversations with them and are um, very much making sure that what we are building is in sync with what the industry is looking for. And uh, Mass Life Science Center as well as Mass Bio have been um, very integral in the Nubian Square Life Science training center making sure that we're connected with as many companies as possible and we really invite other people to reach out and and become part of what it is that we're doing. I would assume Mass Life Sciences sees uh, BFIT and Nubian Square as a, as a wonderful place to partner. Yes, we believe that they do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. When the school decided to relocate, um, was part of the intention also to boost an historically black neighborhood with new development? That's to both of you. Well, yes. I mean, I think that the combination of uh, Aisha's project and my project blends the following. Education, training, art, culture. We also are putting in a 300-car garage. Right now, the square opens at sort of 738, shuts down around 233, five days a week. We want vibrant cultural art evening activity. For example, the Roxbury Film Festival 
we hope they will have more uh, showings in the square because we plan to build a new facility. Mm -hmm. Right now, you don't get any pre-dinner, post-event dinner. None of the, the, the multiplier of spending occurs in the square. You so want people excited. to be able to hang out after the businesses there are closed. Absolutely. Walk around on the sidewalks, uh, sidewalk dining, restaurants, Absolutely. et cetera. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. there's, and there's no reason that that cannot happen. So we also, there's a project across the street, uh, Dream Development and Boston Atlantic have already started construction of 70 units. Aisha started her demo, and we hope uh, end of the year we'll begin construction. So, so it's exciting. Now, so Nubian Square just renamed Nubian Square. Yes. Um, Richard and, and Aisha, how are you going to make sure that all this development doesn't displace people? Well, in, in the, the narrow sense, uh, mm -hmm. what's important about the two areas where we're building is that there were no, um, there's no housing there to, to, to begin with. And so this actually really brings economic development to an area. And because we're training in fields that pay well, we're really helping to increase the buying power of people in the neighborhood. And we hope that folks see that and that understand the connection between access to education and the ability to stay in a city uh, because technical and trade fields pay well enough for you to do that. So mm -hmm. that's an important connection between what it is we're bringing uh, into the neighborhood and, and what that will mean in terms of people's ability to pursue uh, career paths that are important in order to um, you know make sure that they're economically sustainable. And Richard, closing thought to you on making sure folks are not displaced. Yeah. Well, it's a great idea. Everybody talks about development without displacement. Um, We've been fortunate, uh, Ruggles Progressive Partners and Tishman Spire have offered for our P3 proposal a non-displacement fund. We believe that all developments in and around Roxbury should be able to contribute to a fund. So if you're a senior who raised your family, maybe a single parent now in your home for over 20 years, you can't pay the real estate taxes that have escalated. Apply to the fund, we'll help you pay your real estate taxes. Okay, it's all good. Richard Taylor, Aisha Francis, thanks to you both for being here. And thanks to you all for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at CityLine5. And you can follow me on Twitter at Karen Holmes Ward. Have a great afternoon.